What's up, Nerf Herders? I'm Scott. And I'm J-Bone. Welcome to the Nerf Herders Podcast. We're missing somebody today. John's gone. Yeah, John. He John stayed Boy. in Anaheim. See you in hell, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to all start a celebration. John said, I'm moving to Anaheim, so uh, yeah. we haven't heard from him since. Yeah, he, 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 I had to fly home by myself. Um, he said, screw y'all. Yeah, it's been three right. days. Three days of no John, so <laughs> yeah. maybe we'll get an update by the end of this. <laughs> He's camping out for Anaheim's 2017. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you guys very much for coming along. Please check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash podcast, or click mm. right there. So, all right. Star Wars Celebration was a big hit and a big miss for a lot of things. So we're going to talk about some of the highlights that we had. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, we'll start off with that. But we, we went in line camping out Wednesday yeah, afternoon. Yeah, let's, let's just break it. Like, let's just, yeah, start from the start from the beginning. Yeah, we're just, we'll just break this all down here. So we started Wednesday afternoon sitting in line, got into the convention hall yeah. at 6 p.m., waited that out till <clears> 6 a.m., which we got wristbands, and we were supposed to start getting lined up, which we didn't get lined up until 9 a.m. Yep. So it was it was a long camp out. We were like a 17, 18 hour camp out. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, 17, yeah, I we got there at 3 p.m. You guys showed up like right afterwards. Um, God, dude, what what a, that was long, man. That was a grind. That was an, that was an intense camp out. Like, that was a grind for me. Like, and then... I was, I mean, the weather was nice, so it's like you didn't have to deal with Florida humidity. <clears throat> then you get inside the building, and it's like, and you're like all just crammed with like people you don't know, which is whatever. You're like you, you get to just say screw it after like an hour. Yeah, and you used to getting real close to people real quick. <laughs> yeah, and then like, then like the the bathrooms are serving like cafeteria food, and you can only like handle so much of that shit, and then you're you're just like. You're kind of like, okay, I'll just try to sleep, but then you can't sleep because you're laying on concrete floor, and then you're trying to, like, use your pillow as a backpack, and then, oh, my God. And <laughs> or, then, or all of us spooning each other. <laughs> yeah, but then, uh, but then, yeah, you got, then pizza came. Yeah, which we were there for. We got, we got JJ's pizza, yeah. which was awesome. That was so cool. And when, when the pizza finally came around, I got the second batch because he ordered a lot of pizza, <clears> so <throat> the first batch came in. Bunch of people walking around stacks. You're talking like, thousands of dollars, man. Oh yeah, and they're like, "Don't worry, don't worry, we're bringing more, we're bringing more." And they brought more, and I, you know, the pizza came around and stuff. And right when the first round came, five minutes later, it was already posted as articles on the internet. Are you serious? Yeah, and I was like, "Holy crap, dude! Like, this is already out there." How does this already? Get... Someone must have been in like um, reporters or some sort of like uh... something. Yeah, because comicbook.com had it up like immediately, and a couple other. It was just like like that. Pizza's there, and it's already all over the place. I wonder if comic book. I see. I wonder if those. Those the bigger ones, because um, I know like there were some people for IGN and stuff like that. There, one guy from a podcast did a giant bomb, but they were four dayers. Oh yeah, like but I, you know, you wonder if you get like some sort of um, like a press badge, uh, and you're just walking and you're just like going yeah, down. You're something. like, hey, pizza! Like who ordered that? Oh, JJ Abrams. You oh, know, exactly. Like, upload. Hey, cause they found out immediately, dude. <clears throat> like immediately, and. Um, it was so freaking cool, man. It was like it was like a nice kind of like yeah, dude. Like he knows we're camping out. That's what we got. We got pizza for them. That was, was really cool. that was really nice of him. George Lucas never fucking did that. Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> George Lucas gave us a cold shoulder with his bodyguards and shit. You know, yeah, hid behind the bodyguards and twenty policemen. Story for another day. <laughs> um, and uh, but yeah, so we get the pizza. Everything's real chill with that. But the way that they ordered the pizzas, they called the pizza place. Like I said in the panel, five minutes before the place was closing, they're like, "Yeah, we need fifteen hundred pizzas." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, and this they is a joke. This is, like, they're like, this is, a, is this a joke? This is a joke. And they're like, no, this is for real, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Dude, they made so, they, dude, they made so much money that night. Oh, yeah, oh, dude. God. That's insanity, man. <clears throat> so we get the pizza. We're all good there. We finally get lined up. We get inside this panel. Like, we're all beat, but it's like we're pumped and we're ready. And holy hell, was this panel worth every single second? We, we were sitting on the, on the main floor. It was like an arena. So you see, like, this, like, big, giant digital movie screen type thing. You got the sound guy in the middle with the camera guys, the camera crew on their selected spots. You got a main arena floor, uh, like, <clears throat> and then you got your, your seats. Yeah. I realized, too, that the seats that were higher up were actually better viewed than the seats on the main floor. Because then you're, like, you're doing one of these numbers, and you're, like, let yeah. me see, let me see. You know, but, I mean, it was cool to get close, but it just felt like I was too far away even though you're on that main section which 
it was like disorganization with that. Like they, they walked us in and then people were just kind of sneaking off to like one section of the main floor while we're getting directed to like what we think is good seats. And then people are like finding open seats and just like, yo, I'm chilling. Yeah, it was like a hardcore free for all. Just like, yeah, exactly. Go, like hardcore just free go find an open spot and put <clears> your <throat> ass in it. That, that's exactly what it was like. Um, but it was so killer, dude. Cause you know, we're sitting there, they bring out JJ Abrams, they bring out Kathleen Kennedy. That, that alone, was super cool that they were planning on coming out. We knew we were going to get that teaser. Yeah. And out of out of nowhere, dude, so they bring out R2-D2, like the actual R2-D2 used in the movie. And it's like, oh, sweet, this is awesome. And they brought out the two droid makers that they picked up at Celebration Europe, which is really cool, just like totally paying respect to fans, to hire people like that, just be like, yeah, come do the movie. Yeah, why, why hire, why try to dig through people in Hollywood, to, you know, when you got them right here? Yeah. Like you got these guys right here doing this stuff live before your eyes, and it's like, uh, you want to come do the new movie for us? You oh, know, yeah. you call, they, even they said, they're like, uh, we freaked out. We called up back home. We're like, we're doing the new movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're set for life, man. Oh, it, yeah, it's too freaking cool. And then one of the <clears throat> coolest moments, like top five favorite moments of celebration for me, they roll out BB-8. And yeah. it's like, as soon as they say, yeah. like, we got another droid here. And I'm like, oh, don't even, like, don't. Because you know it's not C-3PO. They're not going to have Anthony Daniels dressed up. I, I knew it was going to be that BB-8, dude. And when they rolled that thing out, and to see that thing practical, that was one of the most mind-blowing moments. Like, being, visually seeing that, like, with your own eyes, without having to watch it on a computer screen or anything, because I know they live stream that, to actually sit in that room and watch that thing roll out on stage was just unbelievable. That'd be like someone seeing, like, the hoverboard in full-blown action. Yeah. Before your eyes. It's like, holy shit. Like, this is real. Yeah. It was so cool. I always remember, I was telling my girlfriend about it, and I'm like, this was real. Like, I showed her the original t teaser. And um, <clears throat> I'm like, this is not CGI. Like, this is what you're seeing right now in this little full section in the, in the first teaser. Like, this is real. Like, that little... Yeah. In the sand. And uh, it's like, wow, no way. And then I showed her. She's like, oh, my God. I'm like, it was... People freaked out. Oh, like, yeah, they, dude. Like, it was, it was like some whew. sort of magnetism type of thing that they built. I don't know how they built it. I don't know. Like, <laughs> but it was awesome. Yeah, that was, that was freaking <clears throat> mind-blowing. And it's cool because... I, you already felt like a connection to like BB-8. Oh yeah, and he's such a cute, cute droid, dude. Like yeah. when you see him in that first teaser, you're like, this droid's gonna be badass, man. No, like, he's <laughs> definitely gonna be badass. More, he is like the Jar Jar Binks without Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, he's the the non Gungan. <laughs> yeah, the non Gungan. He's actually cool, dude. So I thought that was nice. Yeah, I, I think that's cool, dude. I, I think <laughs> I think you know we'll see how the movie goes, but I think a lot of BB-8 and R2D2. Can you know? I, I hope we see a lot of play between them. It'd be really nice. Yeah. Um, like jealousy, like yeah, a little jealousy exactly. or something. Like where they start like bumping into each other and they're fighting. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and then a, a huge surprise, which none of us expected. They bring out the new stars. So we got Oscar Isaac, John Boyega, Daisy yeah, Boyega. Ridley come out. Yeah. And that was, and they brought out all at the same time, which I liked. It was just like, here's the new stars, boom, and they all came out. It was just awesome. Uh, before they came out, Kathleen Kennedy announced uh, that Harrison Ford was supposed to come out. Yeah. Was supposed to be there. The plane crash basically halted everything for his, like, the next six to eight months. Mm -hmm. And that she emphasized, like, he will be at the next ones. Like, he will. Like, probably sign a contract that he's going to have to do it. Oh, yeah. Probably be awesome. You know, which is, yeah, which is totally cool. People are going to freak, dude. <clears throat> if he starts showing up at celebrations... And people know they can get an autograph. I'll, I'll pay whatever. I will. Yeah. Like, I will pay whatever. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, John Boyega posted on his like Twitter that he was uh, he was walking the show floor, man, with a with a uh, stormtrooper helmet on. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, and well, I mean, he was wearing like street clothes. He all he did was put a yellow stormtrooper like cl Attack of the Clone style uh, helmet on, and just he just posted pictures, dude, selfies and shit, <laughs> and people, you know, it's just. Same thing George Lucas did a couple years back. Remember that? When he just yep. threw threw a mask on and it's just like, yo, I'm going to walk the show floor. You know, or else people will freak out. Yeah, you know? that's, that's freaking cool. I, I'm really excited for John Boyega in there. Um, people are making fun of him saying, like, all this guy does is, like, have breathing problems. That's because it's these stupid idiots who, when the teaser came out, they're like, oh, black guy? Oh, black guy? It's like, yeah. dude, suck it. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah like, if you're Get talking about here. this shit, it's 2015. Like, this ain't 1950, like, America's changing. Like yeah. this is a completely different era. We're in the eighteen hundreds. Repression, repression. <laughs> Freaking these immature morons, dude. John Boyega is a good actor. He's gonna crush his role. I 
I can't wait. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so after after there, uh, we got all the stormtroopers, which is so cool. They bring out like the allegiance of these new stormtroopers, like ten or twelve. Yeah, of them. I remember that. Yeah, that was cool as fuck. <sighs> so awesome, dude. And then after that, then we knew we were going to get these people, dude. Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Peter Mayhew, and yeah. Anthony Daniels all come out. And we, they all, do to see all them on stage, everybody on stage, we're like, all right, we're all going to chill here, like, get your cameras <coughs> and take pictures, like, capture the moment. Holy cow, man. Like, that, that, that was history. You're never going to see that kind of a stage in that setting ever again. Yeah, the internet really, like, stopped. Like, everything, the, the world was covering everything Star Wars that was, like, four days. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was so crazy to see... And then Mark Hamill's coming out saying, you know, you're family to us. Like, this is, you, you could you could totally tell that, like, you could, I mean, that's so weird. It's like, you can tell that everybody knew they made something. That movie is going to be so special. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, touching to every fan. And not only like that, but they also know that it's like, oh, my God. <clears throat> this is on par with, like, the original like, this has kind of got that magic that, you know, um, it'll just be, like, like uh, amazing. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of a word. To, like, you can tell, to. You can tell, like, you can tell, like, every, like, you can tell Carrie Fisher, Hamill, uh, um, uh, Peter Mayhew. You can tell the younger actors, Boyega and all them. You can tell everybody, Kathleen Kennedy, JJ, you can tell, like, in the back of their minds, like, everybody was on the same page, you know, and, like, yeah, we created... A cluster fucking bomb. Oh yeah, they're like, they're like, you guys have no idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys have no idea what you're like yeah. in store for on December seventeenth. And that was cool. They were <clears> super <throat> like genuine excitement. It wasn't just like we're here to promote a movie. They were like, dudes, like we're pumped. Can't wait to show you this. Yeah, it was it was killer. And I'm dude. glad JJ. He seemed very genuine and down to earth, like knowing that he was at the helm of this, like driving yeah, like, it. Super humbled. Super humbled by yeah. that. You know so. They all walk off, and we, you know, JJ comes out and introduces the teaser, and we get the most mind-blowing experience ever. Not only was this teaser the best teaser slash trailer that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I, I agree. The, I, ener the energy in that room, you can't, you cannot beat the energy in that room. When they first, you know, they're panning across Jakku, and you see that Star Destroyer down, and people start cheering, dude. And then they show Darth Vader's helmet, and people start cheering, and you get all the way through, man, people are freaking out, and you get to the end, dude, and they show Han Solo and Chewbacca, and it was just like, everybody jumped out of their seats. The, that moment, dude, it was just like, if I wasn't already bawling my eyes out, like I was like hyperventilating at that point because it's all that energy and that scene just dude, like done. Everybody at the drop of a hat threw their, threw their, got up by their seat, threw their hands up as if like, it's like as if like the Bears threw a final touchdown. You know what I mean? It's just like you won the Super Bowl. It's like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like Jordan doing like the last like fadeaway jumper, dude, and the buzzer hits. It's like boom, sinker. Like you just you like, just dude. you just won like the '98 like NBA championship against the Utah Jazz. You know what I mean? Like it was like that moment. It was like it was, dude. As soon as he said like Chewy, like you couldn't really hear it because it was like everyone's cheering, and it's like you know you can't you can't hear him say Chewy. But then when like it cuts into him, it's like that's it, done. Like you. Just basically broke a record. Yeah. Like, it's like all right, I'm going to go home for the rest of the yeah. day. <laughs> Their memes hit everywhere all over the internet. They're like, Chewy, you're home with the, with the scene. And then it showed, like, a cartoon of, like, a guy crying. And he's like, yes, yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was instantaneous. And then people, the very next day, they already printed their own shirts. <clears throat> yeah. Han and Chewy, others said, Chewy, we're home. Like, yeah. They were already printing shirts, wearing them to the celebration. Yeah, I seeing that. Yeah, like, where'd you get that? Like, we made them, like, last night. Yeah, <laughs> we printed them last night. <laughs> it was freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, so we made it to the Carrie Fisher panel as well, which was an absolute blast. It's always fun to go see Carrie Fisher because uh, you have no idea what you're gonna get. Yeah, that one on and, the internet too. Like, oh I was yeah, like, uh, I heard that Carrie Fisher made out with some guy. Yeah, she yeah, did. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> she totally did. <laughs> but yeah, her her stuff's always crazy. She's talking about alcohol and LSD mm. and. Just dropping f bombs. I mean, she's just she's wild. She just don't care. She goes for it. Yeah. And to close the whole thing out, yeah, that dude's like, yeah. So I was promised a picture, blah blah blah, whatever the hell it was. And so he goes up <laughs> on stage to get a picture, and she gives him a kiss. You're like, oh, that's cute. It's like, oh, just yeah. like totally dove in. I was like, oh yeah. boy, total like, yeah, just went to town on the guy, and it's like, you know, that's that's crazy, dude. Yeah. To walk away from that, and be like, yeah. You know, like, show your kids, you know, oh, my God, I love Star Wars. I'm Princess Leia. Let me tell you this story. <laughs> you know, it's like... You're, like, 90 talking like the great-great-grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was too freaking cool. So, Carrie was a ton of fun. 
And uh, the last panel that we were able to get into was the Gareth Edwards panel, which unfortunately Josh Trank wasn't able to be there, so we couldn't talk anything about what this other anthology film is going to be, is what they're calling them. Um, which sucks. Yeah, I was really looking forward to, you know, just kind of, even, even if they were going to say anything about it, just to hear Josh Trank talk about his excitement to be a part of it would have been great. But regardless, Gareth Edwards is fantastic. Kathleen Kennedy came out. Um, I can't remember the lady's name, but the one who's right underneath her Lucasfilm now. Yeah, she had a honcho chick, man. Yeah, so they were out there talking openly about this, and I really like <clears throat> what, what they did with the celebration was that it wasn't just, yeah, come here and you know, pay your money, we're just going to be the same panel you always get. They really saved some good exclusive stuff. You know, when we got that Rogue One panel, that was the first announcement, like, these are called anthology films. We got to see the official logo for what the movie's going to look like, and we got a little teaser, which was awesome. <laughs> they, they made an emphasis. They, <clears throat> they're like, don't call it a standalone, don't call it an offshoot, it's anthology. Yeah. And there's like, <laughs> Rogue One anthology. Yeah, I, like, I think that's cool. I, I really, cool too. really dig that. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this teaser that they did, I mean, granted, oh, probably awesome. not even a scene from the movie, just something whipped up just to show us, you know, hey. Some CGI shit, oh, you know. Oh, man, it was, it was killer because they before they gave us the plot of the movie, <clears throat> they showed the teaser. And nobody has seen this unless you caught the bootleg. But what this teaser essentially did is you hear Alec Guinness doing a voiceover from, you know, episode four. Yep. When he's, you know, talking to Luke about how things used to be and when the Empire took over and all this. And they're panning up. And you see a TIE fighter take off, and you're kind of like in this jungle setting. And then they start zooming in, and you see what appears to be a moon in yeah. the background. It's so far off there. It's just huge and like moon easy. Just, just like cutting into the atmosphere. Exactly. Yeah. And then they <clears throat> slowly pan, slowly pan in, and then you see the, like the laser cannon of the Death Star. Yeah. It's just, holy crap. Because it was, first of all, it's badass to see the Death Star. Secondly, that was the immediate acknowledgement that this film takes place between episodes three and four. Yep. And you just, all of a sudden, you're like, okay, I know where this is taking place. Yeah. One minute later, we get the plot of the movie, and it's legit confirmed. This is going to be the story of um, the Rebels infiltrating the Death Star to steal the plans. You know, it's so awesome. You know, it's so weird, too, God, because, dude. because he mentioned how, um, <clears throat> how Gareth Edwards mentioned that this is the first time in his career that he was able to work with so many talented individuals. And he's like, this is probably going to be my first and only time. He seemed very humble guy, you know? And I was like, well, after this, because you know it's going to be successful, because I really liked Godzilla, uh, they're probably going to give you, like, a shoe in to work with more people. But what I'm trying to say is, is that uh, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I'm hearing him talk about, you know, infiltration, uh, war and stuff like that, and the guy who was inter the interviewer, <clears throat> he was kind of like, "Well, this is so like a lot of war, huh?" And I'm thinking to myself, "I'm like, well, it's called Star Wars, yeah." And yeah, that's exactly. what Gareth Edwards said, like, <laughs> He's straight up said like, it. "Well, it's called Star Wars," and it's like, "Yeah, dude, straight up, like, it's the name of the of the franchise." You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, you gotta have something. I think it's so cool, man. Like, because you know they succeed. Oh, yeah. You know they succeed because uh, they're given the trench run blueprints in four for Luke and the X-Wing pilots, you know, the Re the Rebels. And, uh, and like, uh, Shifley was saying, he was like, yeah. And they also say, you know, a lot of people died getting this, obtaining this information, you know, in four. Um, so, you know, it's like, you know, it's either going to be like one, like everyone's going to go in, one guy comes out with the plans and he's like, everybody died, like. I sacrificed. It was like a kamikaze mission. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? It's going to be total kamikaze. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, there's there's going to be some dark <clears> stuff <throat> in there, dude. I think you know, there's going to be a, a, an emotional attachment to characters that, yeah, you know ultimately what their fate's going to be and stuff. Um, I hope it, they show Vader. Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool if they showed Vader in there or just acknowledge the fact that, you know, he is there or something, you know, just, just mentioning him. They're going to have to. They're going to have to mention these things. They're going to have to mention the names of Princess Leia, or, you know what I mean, There's these these are all things that are going to have to be tangible in there, which is, I'm really excited to see that. I'm also really excited to see if they're going to cast younger versions of some of the other X-Wing fighter pilots who escape and are actually in the battle of Yavin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is there going to be, like, a um, Wedge Antilles character who's going to be a part of this, who escapes and stuff, you know, or, um, oh, like, Porkins, or, you know what I mean? Any, yeah. any, of these, any of these characters that are a part of that battle of Yavin that, you know, a wedge survives, but Porkins dies and stuff like that. But yeah, um, doesn't Wedge survive all of them? Dude, Wedge is the man. Yeah, he was so pissed off, dude. They <clears> wanted <throat> him to come back and do episode seven. He didn't want to do it. Why not? I don't know, but it's your Wedge. Come back, dude. You're the most badass pilot. You know. 
Yeah, that sucks, is what sucks it for is. him, dude. Sucks for him. Detach tow cable. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was super cool. That was the only panel that they did in a live stream. Um, I thought it was really cool how they saved exclusive stuff for this convention with these panels. It wasn't just the same old stuff. You knew you were going to get something special in there. Yeah. Really cool. <clears throat> um, the last really, really big highlight, which. Star Wars Battlefront. Not only the trailer for what people got to see, we got to see Excellent exclusive gameplay, gameplay yeah. footage that nobody's going to get their hands on for a while. Yeah, they, that game comes out November 17th, they reveal, and it was like the uh, like the episode 6 uh, like debriefing hall. You know? You know, at the round table, and then you got your, uh, you know, your Rebels like in like the stadium-style seating. Yeah, it was so cool. <clears throat> um, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Um, I was impressed. Like, I was like really analyzing the footage. You know, like it was pre-alpha. Some of the some of the graphics, like when the AT AT went down, um, some of it was a little like blotchy. Yeah. But I was like, okay, like this is just this is early stage shit. Like you're you're all gonna you know I'm sure you're gonna try to pump it as best as you can, um, especially with that engine they have. That engine they have is the same one they make uh, Battlefield Four and Battlefield Hardline with, which yeah. is like. Really, really good shit. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, the, the, the gameplay footage was just basically Endor. You know, you're fighting ATSTs, ATATs, fighting stormtroopers. Looks amazing. Uh, one press of a button, you're switching from third person to first person. Which I, I really like that. Yeah, I think it was really cool. It was like smooth transitions, just like, uh, you know, to explain it, you'd be like, ah, I don't know. But no, it was like literally one press, like, boom. It was like, boom, boom, out, in and out, in and out. And, uh, yeah, the, the foliage looked really good. Um, <clears throat> Ewok, it was a total recreation of the movie. It was a total recreation. It was like, yeah. wow, this is Endor. Uh, and then, like, yeah, it just ends with them going inside the base. Guy gets force choked. From around the corner. From around you the corner. You don't even see Vader. You just see the guy just lifted up and slammed into a wall. Yeah. Yeah, your guy comes around, tries firing Vader, blocks it, and then just koosh, kills you. And it's like, that's... the Cuts out, fades out, and then they show yeah. like the trailer again. Um, they mentioned that this is no first player, first per, or campaign mode. There's no campaign mode. There's no space battles. There's no space battles in this game. And they're like, and people are like, that sucks. Like, that really sucks. But you look at all the other stuff. Like, you, you see a Boba Fett. Um, <clears throat> you saw Vader. You, Vader's playable. Uh, the free DLC of... Um, Jakku. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. So I think we get to I think play the battle of Jakku I think before the movie comes out. A lot of people will and we'll continue to the next topic, but a lot of people on the internet were like, Oh my god, EA, they were rated the worst company, literally the worst company in the world. EA was Electronic Arts was rated the worst company in the world, uh back to back, I think in 2012, 2013, not 2014, and this year I, I doubt it too, but worst company in the world, and they're Famous for microtransactions and DLC shit and season pass stuff, you know. So people are like, oh my god, like this is going to be filled with this stuff. And the <clears throat> head honcho for EA came out and said, literally, this is, I think this was dirt, like day four or maybe like the day, like this uh, Monday, he came out and was just like, no, there is no, there is not going to be any deal, like any, um, like, there's probably going to be DLC to buy, but it's not going to be what we think. Like, not for example, you need it to have fun with the game or exactly. something. Exactly. Like, say, like, I want to play as Darth Vader. So does everybody else. Like, you'd be stupid not to want to play that. Like, don't make him nine ninety nine. You know, make him free. Like, make yourselves, like, worth a company that people want to... You know what I mean? If you've got no story mode, no this, no that, no this, no that. But you have, like, this, like, Yavin or Endor... Uh, which looked beautiful, Jakku, oh, yeah. and you know um, Hoth, you know that's fine, that's cool. Like they're not, they're, they said they're not doing any prequel, like pre prequel shit. It's all four, five, six worlds. Awesome, that's what everybody wants. So give people what they want by giving them like Boba Fett and Vader. You know what I mean? Don't be that company. Don't be that asshole. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> don't do it, man. You had one job. Like you had one job. <laughs> one job. You had one job to make this a good Star Wars game that people have been hyped about for. Since it was announced, since you yeah. showed like that footage, it was like, oh my god, and it looks good. It, and oh, it's, it's ridiculous, dude. And the sound, I mean, Grant, we were in like a giant <clears throat> sound bubble, but I mean, dude, the sound—you could hear things come from every angle. It was pinpoint. Yeah, they um, 
pre-alpha footage, then they got alpha, and then they got beta, and then the finished product. And then they're probably going to do patches, like day one patches and shit like that, because they have a really harsh deadline. You're talking November 17th. You got, like, what, six months? And then that game's out, and that's if they don't delay it. So you know they're going to pump out, like, okay, like, here's a day one patch. Like, you're going to install the game, and you're immediately going to get a patch to bug up and patch up any issues that you may encounter. Yeah. Which, okay, I'm fine with. Like, just give us the game. Like, let's yeah. have fun with it. Let's fucking rock face. Yeah, yeah. dude. Well, it's going to be ridiculous. Two, two <clears throat> really cool things to note about this game as well. First thing, he dropped a little tidbit with this Battle of Jakku that we'll be able to play that. Um, December he's, 1st? It's like, yeah, it's like right right before the movie's coming out. Yeah. But he said straight up, he's like, the Battle of Jakku takes place one year after the events in Return of the yeah, Jedi. That's so cool. So that means that that Star Destroyer and X-Wing in the beginning shot of that new teaser yeah. has been set in there for 29 yeah. plus years. So it's it's like, cool, man. So it means right after they blew up the Death Star, there was still stuff going on right after. So that's kind of cool. It was a nice, was a nice little tidbit. The other thing too that I thought was so cool about this, it'd be cool. To, it'd be cool to take the Millennium Falcon and fly it through there. I want to do that too. You know, like, come on, make it, too. make. <laughs> you know, like, come on, dude. Like, this is 2015. This ain't like 1999 where technology is like limited. Yeah, like, agree. Shit to like, use a code to get it in a road squadron. <laughs> like, I want the Falcon because the damage is better. <laughs> but I remember um, that. this is so cool, dude. Because they they straight up said this is going to be the most legit Star Wars game ever created. Because they were able to go into like the archives of all Star Wars props, the vault, and take thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures of all this stuff. So everything you're seeing in this game is 100% yep. to a T what yeah, you yeah. saw in the movie. Even if there was a flaw, any kind of flaw, it's in there. It's like this is an exact replica of what yeah. they had in the movie. So how it's they, that articulate. Yeah, they uh, how the ATs walked. How uh, the at ats walked, how the ATSTs walked, how they turned their head, the sound effects, the the shooting mechanics when they fire out their cannon, their lasers. It was a kaboom, kaboom, you know, like. Yeah, everything is spot, dude. It's gonna be sick, man. It's yeah. gonna be sick. I can't wait to do the online gameplay, dude. We can like all do missions together and oh, just man. go fight on That's Endor. Be sick. And it, it looks amazing. Um, so, <laughs> do we want to talk? Do we want to talk about like the cons of the the con, <laughs> real quick? Yeah, I mean. What, what I mean, let's talk about the worst one, man. You, they way underprepared for having that many people there. <clears throat> I, I think I think we can safely say, as far as getting guests and making really good panels, they hit a home run with all of that. It yeah. was perfect. But when it came down to how many people they were cramming into that place, they didn't they didn't prepare at all. I mean, we had to wait, you know. It was like an hour to two hour plus line just to get into the merch store, and everything was sold. By Thursday and early Friday morning, it was gone. Yeah. And then you're getting in lines to sit and wait for a shipment of shirts to show up. You could buy a damn convention shirt. Yeah, it was sad. Unbelievable. Dude. Unbelievable. <clears throat> and all the lanyards, the exclusive lanyards, all sold out by Thursday. Like the first day of the convention. Yeah. What about all these people that come just on Friday, just on Saturday, just on Sunday? And they have no come? clue how, like what yeah. to expect. You're thinking like, oh man, I really want to like maybe buy this or buy that. First off, you're overpriced. Like your shit's overpriced. Uh, and pe- and sadly, people are gonna buy it, man. Like, oh yeah, but well, uh, that's fine because it's it, it's a shirt. It's a shirt you're not gonna get anywhere else. Yeah, so it's exactly. like if I'm gonna spend twenty five or thirty bucks on a shirt, it better be something no one else is gonna get their hands on. Like that's cool. But when you show up on Saturday, it's like I just spent sixty bucks for like me and my family to come to celebration, enjoy your day. And it's like, oh crap, I need to wait in line for two hours to go get overpicked merch that I wasn't expecting to show up and buy. And you show up at like ten thirty, and it's a madhouse. Hundred and it was like between 120 to 150 thousand people, like at this place. The ones that we went to, 33 thousand people. Uh, so you, it's like it's like oh my god, and then you don't compensate with having enough inventory for exclusive whatever. Yeah. Exclusive this, like you had to wait at 4 a.m. to get these three guys. Yeah. You know Sunday, I mean? Sunday morning. <clears throat> the the one thing I wanted was these freaking exclusive Funkos. So Sunday morning was like last resort. See, I got up, I staked it out in line at 4.30 in the morning. It was already about 30 people in front of me. I rode that wave, and as soon as as soon as soon they're like, God, all right, guys, go on in. I'm right in the front of that wave, man. And everybody just starts sprinting, and I'm like, oh, crap. And they're like, walk, walk. And I'm like, Aah! and I just went, dude. Yeah. I, just, I took off. I went like full sprint mode through that convention yeah. hall. I'm like, I'm getting these damn Funkos. It's just like a... Like a um like a chain reaction. Oh, it's it's, it's nuts. <clears throat> it's nuts. And like for for things like this, like if you want to go for the, the Funko Pops or <coughs> Hallmark had some exclusive ornaments and stuff like that, 
I, I get it, man. If you really want to get that stuff, you got to camp out. Like, you have to do it. The problem with that is, is it's not Funko's problem. It's not Hallmark's problem because they're bringing in supply. The problem is that all the vendors that are on the show floor, all the VIPs, all the handicaps, all that get, like, early access, which is fine. You paid the money for it. Like, you should get it. Yeah. But... They're going in there and they're sweeping out all these exclusives before regular people come in and get a chance. And it's not a lot of people got a lot of these exclusives. I mean, you could get it if you got there early enough and got in line. And then they're turning but, around and selling on eBay or selling it in their booth for three, four, five times to what you actually paid for. It's exactly. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's just like, well, we're going to grab all this stuff real quick and make people pay for more on eBay or come to my, and come then, to my little hut here and we'll make you pay more. Weren't like, you saying no. that... I don't know if you if it was you or if, if it was Shifley, um, people were selling their exhibitor badges or borrowing their exhibitor badges to people or something like that. Like, hey, I have a Saturday adult. I will pay you a hundred dollars. Let me wear your exhibitor badge to get on the show floor early, so I can get these exclusives. Then I'll come back to you and give you your badge back. Um, I'm sure they were because actually, like, when when me and Chris were, um, we were like just what. <laughs> no, they, they, I'm sure they were because we were walking. We were on the autograph floor because they, when we did our photo op with Mark Hamill, they didn't send the picture. So I went back to the photo op. I was like, "Hey, I didn't get these digital files." So they resent them, and we started just walking by the autographs and stuff. And Carrie Fisher's line was up the wazoo, and Mark Hamill's line was really short. For just autographs? Yeah. yeah. I was like, "Man, I'm so surprised her <clears throat> line's so big." And Mark's really shortly. He's done. You know, they must have closed the line or something. And this this guy comes walking up to the VIP, and he's like, "Hey, man, like I'll pay or no, not I'll pay you." He's like, "Hey, man, you give me you give me forty bucks." I'll get you to the front of the line right now, dude, for forty bucks. And I was like, "No, nah, it's cool, man. Like, that thanks though, you know." Wow. They, they get like wow. they get like six line skips or something like that, so where they wow. can take people up six times. Forty bucks to wear my badge to you. Holy shit! Yeah. Like, so it's like it's it's crazy, and it's <clears> like <throat> I, I get that if somebody wants to skip a line, but dude, if, if they're selling out their badge for a hundred bucks, just be like, "Hey, man, you want to get you want to really get the exclusives." You should not have to go to that extreme of a length, dude, to be like, well, I want to go get this t-shirt. Let me pay an extra hundred bucks to use a badge to get in there. <laughs> and that's what like, leaves a bad taste in my mouth. That's what kind of like pisses me off and kind of pisses me off about the thing. Like, I had fun, but I I think Orlando was a little bit more, like, I don't know. It was different, like, as far as the convention itself. Well, like, yeah. this, this one was like... Dynamite explosions because Disney Seven Rogue One is like boom 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 like dynamites were just going off fireworks everywhere. But um, and then like they didn't really collaborate or they tried to I guess but they didn't succeed a hundred percent. Oh, with you got Disneyland right next door. Like do something. Like, yeah, well I, I heard that they they weren't doing anything with those parks because they only got the two parks there. So if they close one, people go crazy. Like, yeah, in Orlando you got so many parks to choose from. So I heard that was the problem with that, which is like all right, I get that. I get yeah, I get it too. The, re the reason Orlando is good, you know, it's like six was a terrible convention, but I mean, five and six were well organized and well put together for things in, in the fact it's, okay, you had 30, 50,000 people, let's say, yeah. but you planned for that. So you didn't have to wait two hours to get into the freaking celebration store to buy a t-shirt. You could walk right in, buy any shirt because they were stocked. The problem is that they planned for that kind of a convention and then they sold 100,000 plus badges and didn't do anything to accommodate for all this overflow. So you try to cram three times as many people into what was a working model before, and it's it was chaos, dude. There, you should not have to wait in a line that long and fight that hard to get a t-shirt at a convention. You just spent $140 to attend. And they, they you know they saw the dollar signs in their eyes. They're like, we are totally doing this next time in California, without a doubt. Well, it's like, okay, if you wanna do it in California, that's fine, we can, we can, we can ride out in California with you, but do something with your staff, your security, uh, have it a lot more manageable. Um, <clears throat> you, got a, you got a plan. And have like you got a 10 times the more inventory. Like you're Disney, you can afford it. You're Reed Pop, you can afford it. Yeah, like you should not have people fighting like zombies over merchandise. If, if people want to fight over exclusives and run through freaking lines like psychopaths <clears throat> on a Sunday morning, that's cool. I'll join that crowd. That's fine, but that's my choice to do that. If I want to go buy a T-shirt that the convention's actually hosting, I should be able to walk in and buy a T-shirt that I want. This is this is not part of the convention. This is part of a vendor paying for a slot to say, "Hey, come here. We'll give you this." What? Yeah. That's cool. I'll, I'll fight through that line. But I want to buy a damn shirt. Like I want a shirt that says Celebration Anaheim on it. I didn't even get a damn shirt. Everything no, was gone. I don't. I don't. I. I 
I tried looking, you know, I went out of line and, and he's like, he's like, hey man, where are you? Like, and I'm like trying to juggle, I'm looking for the shirts uh, and they're all out, you know, like those sizes were all out, you know. Yeah, it sucks. And that, that was the problem. Really, really well put together convention, really good things <clears throat> for Star Wars fans, just a, a really killer celebration, just way, way too over convoluted when it came down to, I want to be able to do this and I can't. You know, people had to literally camp for every single thing and it's... Yeah, it was it was it was overkill to the extent we, that they didn't plan ahead for that. When we got up and we're like, all right, we're gonna get up at six. We're gonna eat breakfast at six thirty. We're gonna get there by seven. We start eating breakfast. Guy from Five Hundred First is like, uh, if you guys are going to get in the line, like it's pretty deep. My buddy's been out there since five a.m. and he was like two hundred deep. And we're like, what? Yeah, there were thousands. What? Of thousands already in there. It's like, oh man. And we're usually like, <clears throat> those people who were camped out for JJ. The, that first, they were the same people who did it for four or did it for five and did it for six, and they were the first ones in line. And they started at like, I had to start at like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And yeah, I don't earlier. think, I don't think they got any exclusives at all, like poster exclusives or anything like that. Yeah, it was. I don't, I don't think so because I didn't see anything get passed on. That's, that's a shame, dude. Like that is a shame. You know, if you're gonna tell people line up at six p.m. because well, line up at six p.m., then you you need to. Yeah, they they should have accommodated better than that. They, they just they need to plan better. If they if they took what this convention was and just <clears> planned <throat> for having, you know, three times as many people that they had in Orlando, you're gonna have a really really nice convention. It yeah. doesn't just have to be successful. This was extremely successful. They made this a very successful thing. Just you shouldn't have a fifty fifty split. Fifty percent of people are happy because maybe this is their first time going and this is their first experience. So to them, they're just like, oh man, yeah, whatever. But for us, when we've seen it, it's like, no, dude, like, you shouldn't have to wait two hours to get a shirt. You don't understand. You shouldn't have to wait that long for a damn shirt. Yeah. But no, you it shouldn't. is what it is. I mean, overall, the stuff we got to do was super solid. Like, we got to do a lot. Yeah, no, and, I agree. Um, I agree. I mean, I just hope that next time is a lot more organized. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Just, just like, yeah, better prepared and organized. Exhausting, dude. It's so exhausting. Like, just grinding every day like that. It's like, man, like, I am, I'm, I'm a... I'm like peopled out, dude. Yeah. You know, like I'm peopled out, man. I don't know. Let's let's talk about this hilarious <clears throat> thing. <laughs> so Star Wars is obviously the talk of the week. <coughs> and we know we're getting this teaser, it's gonna be this huge, amazing thing. And Zack Snyder <laughs> says, Well, I'm gonna try to wreck up this Star Wars work a little bit and drop my Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice teaser. And um, yeah. <laughs> fail. <laughs> this was a bunch of crap. I wanna dedicate this to Nick. <laughs> You watching out there? <laughs> Nick, this one's for you, man. <laughs> Dude, this that was a load of crap. Um, okay. Uh, I've been reading the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel, The Trade. I'm um, about 80% done. Really, really good. I'm like, have you read it? Yeah, oh yeah. Dude, I'm like, I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I can I can see a lot to where Snyder borrowed from Frank Miller's uh, style. The the dark, the old, grizzled veteran Batman who's done like I'm tired and then like you get that re-spark to just uh I have to do this like it's in my blood it's in my like DNA like I have to do this like I am Batman you know what I mean yeah. um the scene where uh he's on the top holding the gun and people are like he don't have a gun well in the graphic novel it's it's a uh it's a, like a tow cable exactly. he fires a tow cable so it's like I like reading that it's like Hold your horses, you know, like, don't just jump to conclusions right away. Um, I don't know, like, what did you think? <laughs> I hated this. I hated it, dude. I thought it was terrible. The, on, the only <clears throat> part of this entire thing that genuinely got me excited. It's so yeah, it's, it's that quick shot, man, where you see Ben Affleck in the bat suit kind of coming around the corner. It's yeah. kind of like a half dark shot, but just it's just the way that he's kind of like... You, like little hunched over, yeah. and just kind of just comes out real brute looking, just like quick. Oh like, yeah, that was a really pretty right shot. Right into FSU, dude. Yeah, yeah, really pretty shot. Everything else, I just I didn't care for. I mean, <clears> it, <throat> like you said, dude, what's his face from IGN posted, man? It's like watching the Star Wars trailer versus the Batman vs Superman was going from like the season finale of Breaking Bad to the season finale of Dexter. Yep. you know, like the series finales. Yeah, and it, it was, yep. dude. It's like this. This was your plan to try to interrupt the Star Wars parade. You just looked like a dumbass. Yeah, and then you hosted your event for people to go to the theater <clears throat> to see this, and you couldn't even like keep this thing from leaking before that. So now all these people that paid money to go to the theater to see this exclusive snippet and get these posters, 
Well, now it's already everywhere, and you're like, oh, I have a secret plan. I threw a little extra footage, which was nothing, but Did, then seeing Batman and Superman running. Yeah, I was, gonna, like I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that, yeah. That, that's all it was, and it's just like, okay, first off, people were posting memes all over the place. Uh, I'm a, Nick, I'm a huge Batman fan. I'm right there with you. Uh, Batman's my favorite. Yeah, same uh, dude. Same. He, he is. He is my favorite. As much as I love Marvel more than DC, yeah. Batman. He's, he's the best superhero ever, dude. He's my favorite just because he reminds me like of. It's weird. It's like I want to say he reminds me of Captain America, but I don't want to say that just because like Captain America, like he's got the fighting abilities and like because he's got the super soldier shit in him, but you can just take a gun, and just boom, and then, like that's it. Like he's done. Like yeah. he just killed a legend. It's the same thing with Batman. Like. So, it, it's just, it's just Unless cool. Unless he's got his gunshot repellent spray on him. Yeah, exactly. So, it's cool. <laughs> and my nose is leaking. Um, but, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. The, uh, okay, so the scene where we heard about them colliding, I thought to myself, I'm like, man, first off, why is Superman running? Like, he can just poof. That's what I was, that's the first thing I'm thinking. <clears throat> why are they running at each other, dude? All he has to do is be like, Poof! Done, yeah, dude. You're done. <laughs> I can pierce the shit out of that fucking armor. Uh, two, there was a meme saying... <laughs> Batman versus Superman. The scene where they're where he's in the in the air and he and he's looking down and it shows the the camera behind uh, Clark Kent behind Superman and it's looking down in the rain towards uh, Batman as as he's looking up you know that oh yeah shot um it's like Batman versus Superman uh, ending spoilers and all you see is like this drawn in like laser beam <laughs> just like <laughs> like I just. Burned him to death. Oh like, that's God. all you need. Like, I just heated him up in his own suit. And, like, he boiled to death. Like, end, done. And it's like, well, shit. Like, I'm a huge Batman fan, but this is kind of funny. And also kind of doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Now, granted, I haven't finished all of Dark Knight Returns, so I don't know how it ends. Um, but I just, um, I don't know, man. Like... It just it didn't it didn't get me excited, dude. Like it did nothing to get me excited. And I think people who are these hardcore DC fanboys who are just like DC, no matter what, no matter what happens, they're gonna get excited. You know deep down that this teaser sucked, and you're still gonna just be like Whoa, about yeah. it, dude. The, the ending of this is what drove me nuts more than anything. I was so looking forward to hearing what Batman was gonna sound like, and then you get this. Do you believe? Yeah. Do you believe? Well, you will. <laughs> I was like, all right, first of all, like, nobody can talk that deep. Yeah. Secondly, your mouth is completely exposed, so it's not like you're covered. We have some kind of voice-changing technique. Yeah. Why is your voice that deep? Why did you put that many effects on it? It, it doesn't make it, sense. It's, it's not... No. It just doesn't work. It, it doesn't work for me. Oh, it's Snyder's vision. It's Snyder's vision. It's like, well, his vision sucks. Yeah. Like, that, that, that's a shitty vision, if you ask me. Like, what... If you had so much faith in Ben Affleck, then put that faith in him. Like, let him become Bruce Wayne. Let him become Batman. Why mask it with... A million effects. Yeah. You know, if you want to shut me up, if you want to shut me up right now, Zack Snyder, you go record Ben Affleck right now, recording that line, and I want to hear it raw. And if he sounds just like that... Yeah. I, I don't know. I'll do something. I also... <laughs> but I, I hated the voice. I hated I know it. we got a couple more trailers to hit, and... Uh, this is probably going to go past an hour, but whatever. Uh, when they showed Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne with gray hair, totally reminded me of like the old Bruce in the novel I just mentioned. Uh, <clears throat> and he's just kind of staring at the Batman suit, like, this is me, like, this is my identity. Should I do it? Should I not? Then you hit it, hear Alfred, who's uh, Jeremy Irons' character, saying, The Rage, you know, that's how it starts, and this and that. Um, I thought that was cool, but, like, something inside of me was just like, ah, oh God, like, this specific scene, I just can't see Ben Affleck as a Bruce Wayne. Like, he's just not selling it to me. You're not selling me on your Bruce Wayne right now. Like, it's yeah. maybe maybe in the movie I'll be like, okay, done. Or maybe in, like, the actual trailer. But in that, I'm just talking, like, that specific little section, you know. Uh, with the Batman, where he said he's, like, hunched over, I was like, okay, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, he fills that suit out nice. Yeah, he looks that, amazing. Really cool. And then you didn't even show Wonder Woman. You didn't show uh, Aquaman. So it's like, like you said, it's like, <laughs> where are you going to put these guys? You know, like. Yeah, it's just, it's too big of a story. It's going to be so shoehorned. I think this movie's going to be a mess. I think visually, I think it's going to be a visually stunning movie. I think it's going to be 
really fun to watch. Oh, it's going to yeah. be great action and stuff like that. But even I think the, the rain, story behind it's going to be not even in, enough. Even in the rain, when Superman, he's like, do you bleed? And he's like, oh, boom. And like you could see like the scratches in the bat suit, oh, in yeah. the armored bat suit, and the rain's like the the rain's like dripping down. Oh, perfect looking! Dude. Oh yeah, that's, that, like, that's what Zack Snyder is good for. He's yeah. he's a visual god, dude. He's so good with visuals. <clears throat> but I don't I don't think we're gonna get a very compelling story. I think it's gonna be a very thin story with just something amazing to watch. Yeah, uh, very different, very different because in the in the novel it's like. Superman is this government tool, it seems, and Batman is the one that everybody hates. Like, the media hates him, anti-Batman, anti-Batman this. Uh, he's doing more harm than good when yeah. you're just you're just fooling yourselves. But it seems like the other way around now. You know what I mean? It seems like Batman's almost like the government tool to me in this teaser. And then Superman is the uh, one, like, you know, false god. Um, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, so... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I I want to be proven wrong so bad. I just oh, I, so there's I. nothing exciting me about this. Like you said, dude, we love Batman so much. Like we're not looking for stuff to hate about this. It's just nothing is turning the wheel the other way. I want to love this movie. Yeah. I was so excited when they first announced it. It was like, oh man, it's gonna be great because I like Man of Steel, and I was like, cool, let's take that and yeah, like, expand right there. Yeah, he's up there, yeah, dude. Right there. It, you know, I'm just like, cool, let's expand off of that. And then everything that's been happening since, like, n just nothing's excited me as much as them officially announcing it. With Star Wars, when they announced it, it was like, whoa! And everything that kept happening was just perfect. And I would be ten times more critical of a Star Wars movie than I would a Batman vs. Superman. Because Star Wars, that's my baby. So yeah. it's like, yeah. if, if there's stuff that's not getting me excited about that, it, I, it's, it's love-hate. You're either going to really hate everything or you're really love it. And they're doing that perfectly. And I'm, not, I'm just not on board with this right now. And the proof is in the pudding, man. Like... 44 million views a week ago when that Star Wars trailer dropped, oh, and then uh, oh. I don't I don't know what Batman's at, but I know it's it's up there. It's in the millions. It's in the teens or in the twenties now. But it's it, the proof's right there, man. Like people, they're they're fired up, but it, it's just uh, I don't know. You got to show us more, man. Like <laughs> yeah, I just <clears throat> we'll see, we'll see. Let's talk about a really exciting trailer. That was freaking Ant Man. Ant Man was awesome. That I, was killer. I, I really don't remember what happened. All I know is that they showed the villain uh, a little bit more seriousness, a lot more seriousness, and you actually get to see him like morph and like oh, run, like, run it, on the dude's dude. shoulder, and he's like, ah. yeah, oh my gosh! And they showed him running with the ants through like the little ant hill stuff. Yeah, the ant. oh, so cool, man. And yeah, Yellow Jacket looks really cool. Yeah, Yellow villain. Jacket. Yeah, he looks cool. <clears throat> I think Paul Rudd is perfect for this role. The, the little the little comedy points in there. It was very subtle comedy. I really like that. Yeah. Um. You know, and he's like, my days of breaking into places and stealing things are over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. like, he's like, what do you like, what do you want me to do? He's like, I need you to break into a place and steal some stuff. Yeah. It's like really good subtle comedy. You know. Um. The one the one thing that I hated about this, that I really hated. It's it's so minute, but I hate in movies when it's like. Blah, 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 blah. You know what that means? This is what I'm talking about. When he's sitting there, he's like, oh, you're going to teach me how to punch. That's how you punch. I hate when they put that stuff in movies. I yeah. hate it. But it's in there. I, I Yeah, I know what you, I know what you mean. I don't, you can't I don't really, know how to put my... You can't put a right tag on it. You can't put a tag on it, but it's that, it's that witty, like, asshole dialogue. It's just yeah. like, we don't really need that, guys. Like, I don't know. But uh, is he... Do you know if, we can, if he's confirmed for... Uh, uh, the future Marvel movies, if Paul Rudd is in it. You know what, honestly, I didn't I didn't <clears throat> check and see or even hear what his contract was, if it was multiple films. I would imagine, I mean, we can look it up after this. I would imagine they locked him in. I mean, they have to. When you're when you're doing these kinds of movies, you just got to prepare for the future. But yeah, he's definitely got to be a part of everything. Yeah. Um, but man, the, the best part of this trailer was the ending, when they're having like the fight. Oh, the yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. When you're so zoomed in on it, it's like this huge epic thing. Yeah, the music, out, it's just music, like, 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 like oh, <laughs> <laughs> and the train just like tips it just fucking tips over it's like <laughs> yeah. then when they That's go back in it's like so epic with you, know, you, know, you know where they stole that from They, you know they totally borrowed that from the Lego movie you know, like the same type of scenes where it's just like, oh, you know and then like you see oh, that's right, yeah. like Will Ferrell just kind of like He's like, what are you doing? Like, these are my toys, you know? It's like, dead silence, you know? It's, it's super blue. It kind of takes you out of the out of the movie. It's like, oh yeah, like it's this not is, that big. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just ants, you know? Like, it's kind of cool. It's funny. Yeah, it was, it was sweet, man. That Ant-Man is just, that's looking better and better. That was the movie I was really skeptical about. And now the more that we're kind of learning about it, I'm getting way excited for that movie. Yeah. 
Um, new Fantastic Four trailer dropped. The last, the little teaser, whatever they put out, <coughs> it, it's, 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 it's Leonardo DiCaprio, dude. It's like, you had my curiosity, now you got my attention. Yeah. Like, this trailer was awesome. I just want to say that the thing was basically, like, that's how you do the thing, man. Oh, like, yeah. Make him like the Hulk. When he comes down from the choppers, like, oh, oh, kaboom. And it's just like, I'm ready to kill. <laughs> you know? Like, it's <laughs> so cool. <laughs> um... They showed Doctor Doom. That was awesome. He Doom looked really looks good. Really good. Looked the first the first uh, image that they showed of him. It kind of leaked out. I was hesitant. I was like, Are you like some tinfoil wrapped guy. <laughs> but <laughs> this, this last image looked cool. Yeah, you can and see like little like electric diodes or something. You know, like like it's like working inside of it. It's so cool. Yeah, everything looks really nice. I like how this is. It's oh, it's, it's such a dark, dare I say, gritty version. But it, it looks like it's gonna be a darker kind of a movie. But yeah, like a good blend, like Chronicle, man, just like Chronicle. Chronicle was a dark movie that had it was it was a lighthearted dark movie, and I think it's gonna be very similar. Now, this is uh, this is twenty, this is Fox, right, or Sony? Yeah, no, this is Fox. Okay, so God, dude, I mean, if Fox made a deal with Spider Man, I'd like to see them eventually make a deal, like in the future, with like say some Ultimate Thanos battle. But that's just that's just me dreaming. But uh, then you'd want to see the same thing for X-Men, too. You'd want to see everybody oh, yeah. get together and just, uh. But um, <clears throat> I wonder if uh, if it is successful, you wonder if they're going to do the same thing like they did with the Silver Surfer and bring in Galactus. A legit Galactus. A legit Galactus. Yeah, that'd be awesome because I don't... It's, it's bad enough, man, that three movies, it's all been Doctor Doom. I mean, Doctor Doom is essentially the central antagonist for all three Fantastic Four yeah. movies now, so... He's one, of the, he's one of the best villains out there. Isn't he like... Oh, he's one of the like the top, top dog villains out there for like sure. Like top ten? Like in there oh, with yeah. Thanos and uh, yeah. uh, uh, Apocalypse and all them, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 a, he's a big dog. Mm. And um, that, that's why it's, it's cool. I want to see a new adaptation in this, this darker tone. But um, yeah, I, I just hope they don't stick with that and ride it out because that's the most notable Fantastic Four villain. I would love to see Galactus and Silver Surfer if they did that properly. Oh, yeah. And, you know, mix it around. But... We'll see. Hopefully the movie does good. I I'm excited for this now. Oh, dude, see like a legit like Galactus or oh, CGI, but do some sort of Mark Ruffalo thing. You know, get the actor like I don't know, whatever. Ron Perlman, fuck it, right? Get Ron, dude, get Ron. Get Ron, get Ron Perlman to do Galactus. There you go. And then just like, uh, <laughs> like I think that'd be badass because Galactus oh, yeah. is whew, devour of worlds. Is his, like tagline, you know? Oh, he's devour. He's a worlds. beast, dude. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so a couple a couple quick casting announcements. Um, Independence Day 2, Bill Pullman, 100% confirmed now. Judd Hirsch, 100% confirmed. Who's, Who's um, Judd Hirsch? That is, um, wow, help me here. Must go faster, must go faster, must go faster. Ian Malcolm. <laughs> I can't think of his name. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum's dad. Um, oh, the the Jewish guy? Yeah. Yeah, so he's 100% in, and Brent Spiner is 100% in, and that's the the crazy scientist guy with the long stringy hair who's oh, like, okay. like, the last couple days was so exciting, all the gizmos, you know? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, we're just like, like, Tar. yeah, dude. Tar. Yeah, it's, God, I gotta watch so, that movie again. He'll be back. Um, so that's cool. That, that's really cool. There, this movie's gonna be fun. It is gonna be fun. I, I have no doubts about it, dude. Like, I kind of wish Will Smith was in it, and he wasn't such a d bag lately. Um, whatever, man. Like, it'll be a fun movie. It'll be an awesome movie. It's, like, it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be an over the top Roland Emmerich. Action, alien, FSU film, and I don't care. That's what I want to see. Yeah, exactly. I, that's what I want to see. Um, going back to Rogue One real quick. This just kind of came out. Um, this is not confirmed, but it's it's kind of on the records as being, you know, very potential here. So uh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, but Riz Ahmed um, potentially has been cast. He is the the sidekick to Jake Gyllenhaal in Nightcrawler. He was his, like the camera guy that was helping him out. Okay. Um, and then also, Such a good movie. Oh, fantastic, dude. So, like, Jake Gyllenhaal should have won an award for that acting performance. Yeah, or it should have, should have been recognized <clears> to <throat> some extent. That was That was, a, like, so fast and witty. Like, how do you... Continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Sam Claflin, also, who's uh, Finnick in Hunger Games. He was okay. the real hard-ass in um, Catch I didn't. Fire. I didn't even see uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Or to oh. go, to go <laughs> Mocking 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 Jay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't even seen the first one yet. And like, 
don't know. I really like those movies. So yeah, they are good. Um, so <clears> that, <throat> that's that. I mean, that's that. Their celebration. A lot of trailers dropped. Um, it's a couple casting announcements. So what do we got for video games? Okay, so gaming. Uh, Sefton, this guy named Sefton Hill, he one of the head honchos for Rocksteady, he was making the Arkham Knight. Uh, Rock City Studios, he hinted on his Twitter, he hinted at a new Arkham Knight trailer and countdown starting tonight, uh, 6 p.m. London time, which I tried to like convert it on the, on my phone on the way here, and I like couldn't figure it out. Like it, I don't know if the website was just being weird, or I need like, a laptop to actually do it. Um, so it's probably going to be, I don't know, tomorrow or whatever, 6 p.m. tonight in London. So I don't know if that was yesterday or if that's tomorrow i don't i don't know it's next week dude but new trailer or countdown to something because that game comes out in like two months and oh god i pre-order that dude i'm gonna do like an unboxing video of that I'm gonna like, oh i i paid like the hundred dollars to get like the limited edition you, there's you, there's one where you can pay like 250 which is like the batmobile one or you get one with like a batman statue and i wanted the batman statue yeah that's pretty cool hundred dollars yeah, you get uh, you get a comic book, you get um, <clears throat> some cool stuff with it, and you get the game, and then, like I'm gonna do an unboxing video for us, like on the, you know what I mean? That's gonna be yeah, hell yeah, dude. it's gonna be awesome. That that game is, ugh, I have really high hopes. It's probably gonna be it's gonna be a contender for game of the year. Like I think that game is just gonna blow people's minds because they've been so hush about it, dude. They've been so quiet. Like all you know is like Scarecrow comes in, throws his fear toxin, bullshit, fear mongering stuff at you. He's got a, a foot soldier whose name's Arkham Knight, hence the name, and Batman, like, everybody teamed up together to take out Batman. You know what I mean? Like, everybody. Two-Face, Penguin, uh, 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 Flower Girl, what's her name? No, Ivy. Ivy, thank you. So, I think it's going to be good, and I think that they left out, like, there's a lot of heavy hitters that are going to be in this game, man. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think that Superman's going to come in and be like, yo, do you need my help? Yeah, I mentioned this before, but I think he's going to come in and be like, yo, do you need my help? And he'll be like, no, Clark, get out of here. I got this. <laughs> you know, like, total thing, like, get out of my way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Rockstar, uh, GTA V. Uh, <laughs> Rockstar customer service, I had to write this down, I thought it was funny. Rockstar customer service and uh, has been instructed to hang up on customers. So I guess if you have, wow. a, if you have a complaint uh, with Rockstar... Then, uh, sorry. <laughs> it's like, click. That's the way to do it, man. It's like, fuck you, man. We're a multi-billion dollar company. Like, we basically... Mm, Why even pay people to answer the phones? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, just let it be, dude. Pull the cord, dude. <laughs> hey, Rockstar. <laughs> exactly. Uh, next one, there was, a, there was a game that I played on PS3 called Deus Ex. I remember Josh was all about it. And uh, I played it. Awesome game. It's basically like a... Takes place in the near near distant future. He plays a cop, and it's almost like a RoboCop thing where you 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 go in, shit happens. You go into like a coma, like vegetative state. You come back with like basically like a UI HUD, like RoboCop. So it's like your vision. You can see like through your eyes, like your health, yeah, how much yeah. ammo you have, stuff like that. Total RoboCop esque Terminator type thing going on, but you're still got that human quality, and uh, you basically just take out the bad guys. Uh, <clears throat> awesome game, awesome, awesome, awesome game. Uh, new a new trailer and gameplay footage dropped for their new one coming out for the, the new consoles. I think it's going to be out this year. I think I could be wrong. I have to double check. Da it's called Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Uh, dropped with the trailer and gameplay footage, um, and the trailer. Oh man, it looked awesome. Visuals looked stunning. Uh, and it was cool because the trailer, they clearly show like the dollar bill, triangle, Illuminati eye. Oh, yeah, like course. he's like he's taking out like Illuminati members. And it was so cool, dude. Like like they're coming after him or something and he's just like, I'm taking your ass down. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was so awesome, dude. That's you know? pretty cool. Yeah, you got to check it out. <clears throat> if you purchase the combat, if you purchase the K, K combat with a K, the combat pack DLC You'll be receiving the Jason Voorhees on May 5th as a playable character in Mortal Kombat X. There you go. $14.99, please. $14.99. Or you can pay $4.99 for the easy fatalities button. Press X for fatality one. And I can't go forward, back, forward, square anymore. 
For those of you who don't like four button fatalities, such bullshit. Press L3. If you're listening and you bought that, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> you want, they want them WCW NWO finishers, dude, from N64. Where you Remember, like super grapple to super, snap the joypad, super, dude. Whole day, super grapple. Yeah, I never, dude, it took me, I had to go to Walmart, pick up a strategy guide. I'm like, there's got to be more to this game. Because I'm just doing like body slams to finish them. And they're like, oh, yeah, you got to flick the joystick. Flick the joystick, dude. I was like, no every, way. Every finisher. Boop. Jackhammer. <laughs> yeah, Jackhammer. Yeah, God. Dang, that was a good game. That was, that was game. an awesome game. Bloodborne uh, has a new patch coming out. Uh, it's actually now available, so I'm going to see if it's available when I get home because I want to actually get out some Bloodborne or some Mortal Kombat X. Uh, patch now cuts down load times by 10 to 15 seconds. So every time you die, which you die a lot in that game, a very lot, <laughs> a lot, uh, you get slapped with like the Bloodborne logo, just like boom, and like a load thing. It's like about a good 30 to 40 second load every time. So Jesus. the patch was cut That's down to like, yeah, it's just like, and then you go back and, you know, you do your thing again. But you have so much fun with the game that you don't really think about it. Yeah. It's so crazy. I, I've talked about Bloodborne in the last episode. You have to try this, dude. I'm going to get like, on it, dude. Just like try. Just like pop it in for an hour. It might not be your cup of tea because it's unforgiving. It literally just throws you and fucks you up. And you're like, God, this game is, like, hard, you know? Like, you totally just, I can't take these guys on. And then, like, you just keep trucking through, man. You get powerful, and you're like, this game is awesome, you yeah. know? Um, Square, uh, Square Enix, Square Enix, however you pronounce it, uh, is confirmed to have an E3 press conference this year. Uh, so if you're a fan of the Kingdom Hearts games, I never played them. It's, like, basically Mickey Mouse, like the Disney characters, but they have, like, this ultimate, like, great story that people are like it's one of the best games ever like it's up there with like the like the metal gear solids the, the zeldas it, it's like up there yeah you know and i never played them and i wanted to and they're making so they're making a kingdom hearts 3 that's confirmed they showed a little footage like alpha footage last year at e3 and uh final fantasy if you're a fan of final fantasy i am i played final fantasy 10 was my first game for ps2 uh, it was. It's in my top five games, best games I've ever played in my entire life. Um, real tear, tear jerker, amazing, amazing game. I left with my jaw dropped. Come to find out, uh, what's his name? James Arnold Taylor plays the oh, main yeah. voice act. Is the main character in that yep. game, and I was like, oh my god! Like this is so like and. Now that when you listen to his voice, it's it's you can totally hear it, the main character's voice. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, like I think E three this year is going to be a bomb in E three. Uh, I think P S four is going to announce some heavy duty stuff. Xbox is going to announce some first party exclusive. They they already announced uh, Phil Spencer, the head for Xbox One, uh, announced that. Uh, you got these guys doing their own little thing. Ubisoft does their own thing. Uh, E A does their own thing. So you know they're going to show Battlefront footage again more. And uh, Bethesda, who made uh, the Skyrim, uh, Fallout games. Uh, Elder Scrolls, you know, like real deep like RPG games where you can just clock in two hundred hours and just like get lost. Oh yeah. They have their own E three, so they're probably gonna drop Fallout Four, uh, which they've been hush hush about, which is basically a post apocalyptic, just like Survivor, you know. Yeah. And finally, <clears throat> just in, Marvel and Telltale Games are working together to make a game for two thousand seventeen. Really? Yeah, I just like right before you hit record. Just now, oh, dude, that's pretty sick. Yeah, so uh, oh, people that's who made awesome, dude. people who made the Wolf Among Us, Walking Dead, Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, uh, the Back to the Future, Jurassic Parks were eh, like they weren't that good. It was like Walking Dead put them on the map. Wolf Among Us, like even more. Now they're making uh, Game of Thrones, which I haven't even touched yet because it's like five. It's like five bucks an episode, so it's like I'll just wait for all the episodes. So I can just binge it. You know? Yeah, and plus you have to know Game of Thrones before you actually do a Game of Thrones, I guess. You know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, that's cool to get a Marvel thing. That'd be awesome, dude. That's basically it. You got the Mortal Kombat copies. I I was talking to Chris a little bit because he bought. He's like, have you? He was texting me at the convention. He's like, did you play? Did you play? I was like, no. Like, uh, we're gonna pick them up. Like Scotty bought them. We're gonna pick them up and uh, just go to it. He's, I'm like, is it good? He's like, dude, it's the best one in the series. Um, I'm like, can you 
like, or can you like learn fatalities? And he's like, yeah, you, like, you can go on there and right before like the finish him finisher, you can press the start button, bring up the move list and like highlight a fatality and it'll like memorize it. So you can just see it on the screen. So it's like, yeah, like left back, left down, 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 up triangle. You know, it's, it's not like, even that much, dude. It's like down, back, forward, triangle. Are you serious? So simple. I remember Mortal Kombat 2, Shang Tsung, to morph into Kentaro was, I could never do it because you had to do the fucking thing, and you had to take the, the joystick, or like the D-pad at the time, and do a fucking, Yo. and I could never, ever do it, dude. I was so pissed. I was like, and they showed like the, the strategy guy, they showed the picture, you know, like, the, here's Shang Tsung, finish him. Here's the morph starting. Here's Kentaro. Here's the fuck. Here's like the final fatality. Yep. And I was like, oh man. And I was like, duh, 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 and I tried to do the thing and I wouldn't do it. Nope. Yeah, Mortal Kombat X is sick, dude. I mean, are the characters like good? I haven't played as everybody yet. Mm -hmm. I've played mm -hmm. as like four or five of them. All I did is I did a couple towers, went to the crypt, and um, started story mode. Um, the story mode, I really wish they would elaborate on these story modes. It's the only thing that I was a little disappointed with. I haven't finished it yet. I like the story so far, but it's been the same story mode. You know, is it a continuation last... of nine or is oh, it? Oh yeah, like... it, it picks up. You know where they <clears> left <throat> off with that, um, but it, it's it's the same stuff. Dude, we're just you're watching all these you know cutscenes, and then it just goes up. You got to like do like a regular Mortal Kombat face off battle. Yeah, which I wish I wish they'd go back to what they did with um, was it Mortal Kombat Armageddon with the with old Bla band with Blaze? Yeah, where you played as um. Shujinko. Yeah. He started off as the young kid, and it was not really open, kind of open world. Um, you know, but you went through on this. It was a, like a legit story mode. You played as this guy. You grew up. You basically trained the guys. You're going through the actions. You go through all the realms and stuff. Mm. And then when you beat it, you get him as a playable character. I wish they would do something like that because they have um, they have Kenshi's son in this game. Takeda, I think it's Takeda how it's pronounced. Uh, it would have been really cool to do that with Kenshi's kid. Because that's what they're doing in the comic books. You're basically watching this kid get trained by Scorpion as they're going through. And it's been a really freaking cool if they would have a story mode based around that character. Sure. To where like you kind of grow up with them and train them and go through, you know, go through things, and then you get him as a playable character. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 just it's basically the same exact layout for the story mode that they did in the last game. Just a new story now, just to continue it. Are the fatalities cool? I've done a couple. Yeah, they're freaking sweet, dude. Yeah, he was telling me that. He's like, some of them are, I was literally like, yeesh. You know, like, it was like, this is brutal. Yeah, there's like, some, some brutal, brutal stuff, dude. Yeah. There's some brutal stuff. Um, yeah, I can't wait to tap into that shit. Yeah, it's good. It's I good. mean, I haven't played a Mortal Kombat game in like seven years, dude. So, like, I suck at fighting games. Like, I get my ass kicked. Unless, like, I'm consistently doing it. Like, Call of Duty, man. You know, it's like, you suck, and then you just, you learn. You know, like, you learn yeah, yeah. what to do, what not to do, how to do it, you know, stuff like that, so. It, it's good, dude. So, <clears throat> that's that, man. So, let's let's kill this bad boy with an epic quote. And I've got a good one. It's not even a movie that's released yet. But oh, I'm shit. doing it because I already know it's going to be amazing, dude. And that's going to be this. Your father has it. Yeah. Chewie. We're home. That's it, dude. That's, that's it? it? Yeah. I, dude, I can't, I can't get the goosebumps off my body, dude. Yeah. That, like, that we all felt. When that theater, or not theater, but when that convention room exploded, dude, it, it, I get chills thinking about that. When everybody jumped up, man, that moment was just one of the coolest <clears throat> moments of Star Wars going history. <laughs> they, um, remember in the uh, closing ceremony video, they showed Kathleen Kennedy and I think J.J. Abrams in the back when that hit, because you know they're like, oh, please, God, oh, please, dear God, like, yeah. please, like, make this work. And when I was like, Chewie, you're home, ah! like, I think Kathleen Kennedy said something like, uh, along the lines of, this was absolutely insane, like, eruption. It was eruption, dude. It was thunder, <clears> dude. <throat> Grown men were crying. I, I seen it. I seen it with my eyes. <laughs> uh, people were just, like, elated. Um, God, dude. You can just go on and on about that trailer. If you haven't seen that trailer, what are you doing? Watching us, like, <laughs> watch that trailer. You know, like amazing. God dang. Is that John? Huh? John's coming home. Welcome home, Johnny. <laughs> Hitchhiked back home. He's in Vegas right now, gambling for more money so he can get it home. <laughs> right. Gotta get VIP. Mm. 
Oh, man. Good stuff. Did you guys pass through Vegas? Yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. Like, through, like, the downtown strip? Ah, oh, like, in the interstate. But, yeah, I mean, dr- driving alongside it. Was that night? Yeah, it was pretty lit up. So, it's like... <laughs> it, was, it was glooming. It was glooming. Stopped at the Damn. gas station. That's so crazy. It's like... Super scared. It's just like, wow, there's Vegas. You know, like, in the middle of black all around you. And it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> desert Vegas. I'll tell you, dude, <laughs> Vegas is the only spot that you'll ever stop at a gas station and see hookers, Ferraris, pimps, and a Jack in the Box all in one location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. That is going to do it, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. we got to build a subscriber list up, so <clears throat> share the video around, please. And uh, Facebook.com slash Nerf Herders Podcast. We're going to start adding some more content to the page. Um, I'm going to start bringing some movie reviews on. Uh, Jason's going to start doing some video game reviews. Yep. And um, John's going to start doing some more stuff with comic books and yep. all that. Um, we're we're going to think of some more stuff to get some more content on here. So a lot of stuff coming, guys. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of any of the news here. And did you all attend Celebration? If you did, what was your favorite moment with that? Um, that panel just did it for me. Yeah. I'd say the panel. Yeah, the, I think yeah, the best moment was was the reveal. It was, like, it was ridiculous. You, you wait 16, 17, 18 hours and everybody everybody wants to reveal like everybody wants to see it when they make and, that wait worth your time like hell yeah yeah like they they you know they talk about seeing it on the internet and it's like oh my god this is amazing but then when you see it in person it, it totally adds to the spark to the magic in in the like everybody like all the energy like around you is just like oh my god and then you walk out the doors and it's like well let's go to the show floor you know but then the show floor was just ridiculously overpacked but yeah. Yeah, that trailer was so good. Like, yeah, the best best trailer I've I've seen like ever. Dude, um, hands down. Ultron's trailer at San Diego Comic Con, when you got to see it on like YouTube or just like glimpses of it, uh, before it got immediately pulled down or you heard about it, it was like whoa, this is amazing. You know what I mean? Or like other trailers probably live up to the hype, uh, but this one, God, dude. This one's, like, it's weird, man, because, like, 30, like, it's been, like, 30 years, man, and people have waited for, like, shit like this. You know what I mean? It's like all, it paid mm, off, too. Mm, there was no disappointment. Yeah. You've waited, like, 30, yeah, 80s, 90, yeah, you waited, like, 30, 25 years, man, and, like, eh, God, dude, they're going to break the record. They're totally going to do it, dude. Yeah. See you later, Avatar. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> gonna do it. Subscribe to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week. Until then, keep on nerf herding.